Hello, welcome to our Unit 1 Notes on Colonial Regions. We're going to talk a little bit today about kind of the, uh, the personality that develops for each of these colonial regions. We think of these as 13 original colonies, but um, we have to remember this is a very large area, and they all have different uh, individual characteristics as far as climate, what they're doing for industry, what they're doing for agriculture, and so we're going to take a look at those today. All right, so first of all, let's take a look at this overall map that shows us the original 13 colonies. And uh, you'll notice that there's three different colors here. We have the southern colonies in kind of this brownish color. And then in tan here, we've got what we call the middle colonies. And then up here in pink, we have the uh, New England colonies. And I want you to notice up here uh, the current state of what we now call Maine. That was actually not one of the original 13 colonies. This was part of Massachusetts, which is kind of confusing. I know at the time we got um, New Hampshire there kind of in the middle, but Maine is not one of the original 13 colonies. When you see that on the map, just note that it is part of Massachusetts. So as we look at this map, we'll see that there's um, three distinctive regions. What we're going to do now is we're going to break those up into different categories and talk about each specific region. So first of all, let's start with the northernmost colonies and we're going to talk about the New England colonies. So the colonies that consist of this region are New Hampshire, Massachusetts, Rhode Island, and Connecticut. And again, just note there, Maine is actually part of Massachusetts at this point. So those are the four colonies. You'll need to know those for uh, the map test, but um, those are the four colonies that make up the New England colonies. And as we look at the climate, we have to realize that this is the furthest north region of the 13 colonies. They have the coldest winter of the three regions. Uh, it's going to be a little bit harsher and they're also going to have a shorter growing season. So they're not going to have as many days in which that they can um, plant crops. That's going to affect the types of crops that they're able to grow up there. So that's the climate. If you look at this uh, map, this is just kind of a, a generic map that shows um, the number of uh, different like growing regions and stuff. And you'll notice up here, you've got completely different regions than what we're going to talk about as we talk about later with the southern colonies. So just keep in mind that we're not talking about the same climate for these different regions. So in terms of agriculture, the climate is going to affect that a little bit. There's not as much agriculture in the New England region, um, partially because of the harsher uh, winters, but also because of the soil. The soil tends to be a lot more rocky and it's not as rich as what you're going to find in the other colonies or the other colonial regions. Um, part of this is because of the glaciers when they left. Uh, they left and, and uh, when the glaciers melted, they left a lot of different rock deposits and things. I included this picture because it's not uncommon in this region to find walls like this. Sometimes the early uh, settlers would take the rocks from inside their field and move them to the outside of their fields and then they would have kind of like a rock wall um, you also might see these around the roads sometimes. So agricultural wise, uh, not as rich, not as many crops are growing. Um, they still are growing some things, but not on the scale that you're going to see in the other regions. And here's just kind of a picture that kind of shows, again, kind of a, a characteristic of this region, kind of a lot of rocky type soil, stuff that you're probably not going to plant a lot of uh, fields of crops on. Now, in terms of industry in the New England colonies, they're doing a lot of trade. They're doing a lot of shipping. They also have um, fishing as a major industry and then also a uh, trade of rum. So again, not as agriculturally based, a lot more commerce, trading. You're going to see some of the, uh, you know, kind of more like, you know, ship fairing type stuff up in the New England region. All right, so let's move south a little bit. We're going to talk about the middle colonies here. The middle colonies consist of New York, Pennsylvania, New Jersey and Delaware. So those are the middle colonies and you can see them on the map here. So you're going to have a, a couple, you know, major cities develop in there with Philadelphia and you got New York eventually uh, being a part of this region. The climate, because we're a little bit further south um, in relation to the New England colonies, it's going to be a little bit more moderate. And when we say moderate, we kind of mean like average. So it's not going to be like super cold, harsh winters, but it's also not really going to be, um, you know, the more warm climate like you're going to see in Georgia and stuff. So a little bit more average. 
In terms of agriculture, they're going to have a lot more agriculture than what we saw in New England. Um, the soil's okay. It's not as rich as the South, but it's, it's much better than what the New England colonies had. And they're going to grow mostly grain type crops, things like corn and wheat. And because of this, uh, they're known as the breadbasket colonies because they're producing a lot of the agricultural grains, corn, wheat, things like that, that are eventually going to be um, traded or sent to the other colonies. So middle colonies are always kind of known as the breadbasket colonies. Now in terms of industry, they are going to be doing a lot with grains like we just talked about. They do have a little bit more cattle. Um, they are going to do a little bit of shipping as well. You have some major port cities here. And also they're going to be doing some mining. So they're going to be doing like iron ore and stuff like that that they're going to be getting out of the, uh, the ground. Um, so uh, mining and iron is also going to be an industry in the middle colonies. All right, let's move on to our final region. That is the southern colonies. And the colonies that uh, are in this particular region are Georgia, South Carolina, North Carolina, Virginia, and Maryland. So the other uh, colonial regions have four colonies in them. Um, the southern colonies has five. So just go ahead and note that this one has one additional colony in it. As far as climate, they're going to be warmer, and uh, because of their uh, location, they're also going to have the longest growing season. So they're going to be able to grow crops in the south because of the longer growing season that people in the middle colonies or the New England colonies are not able to grow. So they're going to have a completely different kind of agriculture. So again, here's their zones over here, much different than the middle and much, much different than the New England region. So the things that they're going to grow in this particular uh, region is tobacco, cotton, and rice. And this is a combination of both the longer growing season, but also the soil is going to be a lot richer. So they can grow these things um, partially because of the soil, and, and it's not just because of uh, the weather. As far as industry, they're going to do tobacco, rice, as we just mentioned, major agricultural crops. Um, they do have some timber, so they're going to be cutting down some of the the forest and using some of the timber to, to ship back to England specifically, and then naval supplies, things like uh, building ships and, and things like that relating to kind of the shipping industry. Um, but a lot of agriculturally based stuff is going to then be their industry. This gives you an idea of kind of the amount of things that are shipped back to England. Um, this, it's, you know, starts as a relatively small number. And then by the time we start to get into the 1720s, 1730s, 1740s, you can begin to see how England really begins to rely upon the, co the colonies for bringing in different types of goods, whether that's, um, you know, natural resources, whether it's crops, things like that. Um, England is definitely going to increase the amount of uh, things that are going to be shipped from the colonies. So that's kind of a quick preview, but hopefully you can kind of see how each of these regions has a little bit different agriculture, a little bit different climate, and then of course industry as well. And this is going to be important, especially as we get into the formation of the, uh, the new nation when we get uh, into the time period after the American Revolution, because they all want slightly different stuff, depending on what kind of laws you're going to pass in relation to trading and shipping and stuff. You're going to have things that maybe your region wants that maybe isn't as important to another region. So important to understand these 13 colonies are a large geographic area and um, they all have different personalities. All right, we'll see you guys in class. Thanks.